Hey, this is Leach with Simpson Math, and in this video, we will conclude our series of videos where we are talking about graphical transformations of our seven parent functions. And this one, we'll be looking at multiple transformations on the same parent function. So to do that, the order in which you apply these transformations does matter. And I had you copy down the notes in this order for a reason, B, C, A, D. So uh, if you notice that the multiplication happens before the addition um, or just think about this what's happening physically with our graph um, so looking at this horizontal part first uh, what happens is the graph will be horizontally stretched or shrunk or reflected before it is moved off of that corresponding axis so i stretch and shrink around the y-axis or reflect around the y-axis once I do all the stretching and shrinking around the y-axis, I then move left or right away from the y-axis. Same thing happens with the vertical uh, transformations. So uh, I do with the A before the D. So I do all stretches and shrinks and reflections first around the x-axis, and then I move up or down away from the x-axis. This really does matter because some, if some students will try to do, they'll like shift up first, and then do a reflection and they reflect um, incorrectly because they're doing it in the wrong order. So make sure you always do B, C, A, D or our stretches and reflections before the shifts. All right, for these examples today, we'll be identifying A, B, C, and D and what their values are. Um, I'm not having you identify the parent function. We should be pros at that by now. Then we'll describe in words what's happening with the function, what's the what are the transformations. Make sure that we do it in the correct order. Remember, B, C, A, D. Then we'll use the transformations to graph. And then we'll state the domain and range. And this time, I'm just going to alternate between set and interval notation. Um, you can pick, um, but I'll just, I'll just be alternating because normally we just only have to write it in one form. So I want to start practicing that, just one form. And then um, optionally, I'll leave, and I'll leave this up to you. You can double check this in a graphing calculator or software. So let's look at f of x is 1 over x plus 3, and then plus 4. So first, this is the rational parent function. And then I need to identify what's a, what's b, what's c, what's d. So I have a plus 3 and a plus 4. They're both adding, but one's inside, one's outside. This plus 3 is inside the function with the x, which in this case is in the denominator. And this plus 4 is outside, which is the D. So we have our C is X plus 3, and our D is plus 4. So remember, I'm not just naming what C is. I'm, I like to write the uh, binomial with the C, uh, so that way I don't worry about pos pos positives or negatives. Um, I just see that plus 3, and I know that it's going to then go left 3. So I'm going to go left 3, and then up 4. So remember this X, the horizontal motion direction kind of feels backwards. So I'm going to be going left three and then up four. So let's get this graphed. So I'm going to go left three. Oh, my grid's off just a little bit. Let me fix that. All right, this time instead of me graphing my parent function dots and then moving all dots over left three up four, I'm going to show you um, what I like to do. It makes it go a little bit faster for me. So as you saw in the last video, um, that I mentioned about a point of reference. Um, so if you were to move just one point or one spot over and then graph everything around that, it makes makes your life be easier. But the point of reference that I'm always going to move is the origin. I'm going to move this zero zero point, this reference point, to make my life be easier. So I'm going to move. Uh, so again, we, we don't have any stretches or, or reflection or anything, so I can just deal with the shifts directly. So I'm going to shift left, one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna put a plus, and then I can actually go ahead and put my asymptotes right there crossing through that point. So I like to draw a little plus. I often do it in yellow or light color, uh, signifying that that is my origin that has shifted over. So I've gone, I've gone left three, up four. Because this is the rational parent function, I'm also gonna go ahead and graph my asymptotes and label so ha which is my horizontal asymptote 
is y equals 4. Notice it is passing through the y-axis at 4, so y equals 4. And then my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3. Notice it's crossing over the x-axis at negative 3. All right, so what I can do now is I'm just going to literally pretend for just a moment, just for the amount of time for me to put the dots on the page, I'm going to pretend that that's 0, 0. So if I do this and I pretend that that's 0, 0, I can just graph my dots and be done. So half 2, 1, 1, 2, half. So to be clear, I'm pretending that this is 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, and I'm just graphing my dots. I can do the same thing on the negative side. I'm going to pretend that's negative 1, that's negative 2, that's negative 1, that's negative 2, and let's graph the dots. So negative half, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative half. So with this, I do not have to graph them over here and then move every one of these dots left 4, left 3, up 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 4. So you see the amount of time that I saved and the amount of clarity I had on my graph without having a bunch of extra things. All right, so now that I have my dots graphed, I can just swoop my function. So I'm pretty close to the asymptote gradually moving off of it, passing through my dots, swooping through them, and then writing up the other asymptote. And then do the other one. Pretty close to the asymptote, coming off gradually, gradually, going through the dots, and then gradually getting closer and closer and closer to your other asymptote. Arrows all around. All right, so there we have it. There is, there's our function graph. Now let's do domain and range. So um, again, I like to think about with these rational functions because really it's everything except for one number that's not allowed. So my domain, I can go negative infinity all the way up to almost to negative 3. I then hop over with a union of negative 3, pick up on the other side of negative 3, and go. So I can go ahead and write my domain. And I'm doing this in set notation. Uh, so it's all numbers. All numbers are acceptable, just except for negative 3. So I can say it's a set of x's such that x is not negative 3. What about the y's? It's all numbers, just not hop over 4 and 4 all the way up. So it's all numbers, just not 4. So y is not equal to 4. All right, so now let's take a look at a negative 1 over x plus 3 plus 4. What? Mr. Leach, that's almost the same thing. You're right. It is almost the same thing. Um, so all that I've changed this time is it's just a negative uh, a or a negative value out front. And notice I wrote it both ways. If I have a negative out front, you can uh, name that to be an, uh, an a. So it's the same thing there. So let's go through the similar process, but a little bit faster. So our a is negative 1. That's the only thing that's new. We still have our c that's 3 and our d is 4. So in terms of order of operations, what comes first? Remember, do b, c, a, d. So we don't have a b, but we do have the c. So I can, I can go ahead and then move left three units. So I can move left three units. Then which way do we do? Do we reflect and then shift or shift and then reflect? The stretches or the reflections, they happen at the same time and before the uh, the stretch, before the shift up 4. So reflect over the x-axis and then shift up 4. So make sure we do it in the correct order. B, C, A, D. All right. So now um, I can, let's go ahead and graph this. So again, I can just do this quickly because I just did it a second ago. Um, I'm going to shift left 3, up 4, and put my plus. And then that's my origin. And then I'm going to uh, graph my uh, asymptotes. All right, so I graphed my asymptotes um, and labeled them. All right, next, let's just put up our original dots, um, the dots that we did from our previous question. 
because um, the only thing we have to change from that is the reflection. So I'm going to, uh, in orange, put up our half two, one, one, two, half. Uh, I'm going to do those dots around as if this is the origin. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect it. Now, I know you're like, but Mr. Leach, you said order of op the order matters. Yes, I did. Uh, and it looks like you've shifted before you've reflected. So here's my little trick. Yes, technically this ref this shifts before we before we reflect. But my trick is if I'm pretending that, that this is an origin, that this is zero zero, and I do my stretchings or my reflectings around this quite literally, but still pretending that that's my origin, then and I do my all my stretches and reflections around this point, then that will take care of it. And that kind of it's a little bit of a hack to the order of operations. So just to be clear, order of operation says I have my, uh, I would have my rational function. I then would shift it left three. I then would reflect it and look like this and then would shift it up. So that's what the order says to do. Amazing. And I want to uh, write as few dots as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do this. So I have my origin right here pretend origin, but still going to function like one for just a second for the amount of time I'm going to put the dots on the page. And uh, lightly in, in orange, I have those the dots uh, that we got in the previous question. And I'm just going to switch them. So instead of this, this going up two, it's going to go down two. Instead of up one, down one. Instead of up a half, down a half. So let me put these dots. So I'm reflecting these dots over this kind of pretend x-axis and we do the same thing to the other set so I have reflected over the x-axis but I did it on at this pretend origin all right so now let me spoop the dots all right so there we have it um, we've graphed negative 1 over x plus 3 plus 4 um, and I did that, in my opinion, the most efficient manner. If you want to take some extra, take the extra steps, feel free. Um, but I like to move the origin and then do that, do that reflection. All right, we will actually a little bit. Spoiler, oh, I need to do the domain. Forgot to do the domain. All right, so let's do the domain. Um, so the domain won't change even with that reflection uh, because of the nature of the rational function. But I do want to point out because I kind of I didn't do it last time again. When I'm graphing these dots around my this pretend origin, the this being an origin lasts only for the amount of time that I'm placing my dots on the graph. Once I place the dots on the graph, I snap back to reality and I'm aware that this is the real origin. This is actually negative three, negative four, negative five. This is actually a four. Like um, I'm not graphing, I'm not stating my domaining range around this pretend fake, not real origin. I just do that just as a little hack. To put the dots on the page so negative infinity all the way up to almost three hop over the uh, almost negative three hop over the negative three and uh, go to infinity and we have that little piece of glue which is that union and the negative infinity to four and then four to infinity uh, again that glue make sure every interval you write is low to high low to high low to high all right a um, little bit of spoiler but we'll come back to this question I'm going to do one more change to this question to make it one more level of difficulty, uh, but we'll do that uh, after we do a few more examples. All right, so let's take a look at this example, but this time I don't see the equation. I don't see what we're graphing. I just see a description of it. So let's read what it says. It says a cube root function has been shifted right four units and stretched vertically by a factor of two. So let's write the function and then we'll do those five steps. So what could that function be? So we have a cube root function. So I know I'm going to have a cube root. Just going to make some notes to myself. Oops, too thick. Of a cube root function. Uh, it's been shifted right four. So if it's gone to the right four, what letters is that? A, B, C, or D? Well, if it's right four, that's going to be the C. Right, but if it's right four, that's gonna be an x minus four, right? In that in that c area, and stretch vertically by a factor of two. So stretch, so that's multiplication. So it's either the a or the b. 
But since it's vertically, it's going to be outside the function. So that's going to be my uh, an a of 2. So this is an a of 2. So I can put that all together. Um, so that's going to be 2 times the square, sorry, 2 times the cube root of x plus 4. So let's see if that's what we get. Yep. So 2 times the cube root of x minus 4. Or I think I said plus 4 a second ago. Minus 4. Um, so k of x is uh, that function, 2 times the cube root of x minus 4. All right, great. So now let's do all the things. So I basically just sort of spoiled it. Uh, we are going to have a is 2, c is x minus 4. Uh, we're going to shift right 4 and then do a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So let's do that. So I'm going to go right 4. So let's go right 4. And again, I like to put that plus. Right? Instead of me drawing out my parent function dots and then moving everything four and then stretching everything times two, I like to move my origin and be a little pretend origin. So I'm going to put a plus. And do just like, like as you saw when we started with the rational function, the rational function doesn't touch the origin. That's why I do a plus. So I'm going to keep up with that trend with this plus. All right, so uh, there's my right four. And um, at this point, I'll go ahead and draw my parent function dots in orange, but around this new 0, 0, this pretend 0, 0. So uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. I don't have quite, probably have enough room for the 8. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2. A little bit off the graph, but I'm on grade paper. I can do that. And then negative 1, negative 1. And then... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'll put a dot here. All right, so I'm not going to swoop that, um, but I'm going to understand that that is my, um, my parent function dots that have just been shifted right for. So now what I need to do is then stretch this vertically. Now you should, with enough time and practice, that's why it's very important that you practice this, you won't be needing to put these five dots. You can just put, these, put this plus over here, and no, oh, I would put a dot here, but now I'm going to double it and put a dot here. So I'm going to double uh, my y values. So instead of uh, having to put a dot there, I can just double it and put a dot at right there. So this is, instead of being too tall, it is now four units tall. Same thing here, double the y. So I'm doubling this y from one to two. And then double the y from 2 to 4. And that's it. So let's swoop this. All right. So looking at this, um, that is the cube root function that has been shifted to the right four units and a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Um, cube root function doesn't have any domain or range restriction. It's just going to go forever and ever and ever in all directions. Uh, and so I'm doing interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, um, let's take a look at the next one. L of x is 2 cube root of x minus 4 minus 3. Mr. Leach, isn't this just the same thing we just did? Mm, yes, but almost. So what have I added? So I've added this negative 3. So I'm going to pretend almost as if that we haven't done this one, um, but really... All that we've done is we've just taken this cube. All that we're going to change is this uh, cube root function, but then apply this negative 3. Well, what's that negative 3? What letter is that? Well, it's a D because it's adding on the outside. I mean, it's subtraction, but it's the adding on the out, outside. So if I just take this function right here and just go down, go down three units, it's going to be something about like that. So you should already be able to see it in your brain as just this function moved down 3. All right, so now let's graph this L of x. So we've already talked about uh, about all of this, so I can go ahead and uncover that. a is 2, c is x minus 4, or c is the minus 4, but I would like to write that binomial, and then that minus 3. So we're going to go right 4, stretch by a factor of 2, and then shift down 3. So notice order of operations, and then shift down 3. So um, I could... I could just take the dots that we did up. I could literally copy and paste it and then move it down. But I want to show you this process of as if I have I'd have it work the previous one 
what would I do with these three changes, uh, these three transformations to the key root function? So yes, order of operation says, um, we're gonna do what we did a second ago, stretch it before we move it and then move it. But again, I'm lazy. I don't wanna write the graph 20,000 times just to graph one graph. So I'm gonna move to the right four, one, two, three, four, and then down three, one, two, three. Um, so the right, right four, down three, yep. I'm gonna go right four, down three, and then put a plus. So again, there's my pretend little origin. It's not my actual origin. Once I put the dots, I'll forget about it, but I'm gonna put that little plus signifying, that's pretending that's my origin. And then if you need to, you can draw the parent function dots around this origin. Zero, zero, one, one, um, eight, two, again, need to count, Two, four, six, oh, no, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be right there. Negative one, negative one. And again, I have to count uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we have my parent function dots that have been shifted uh, left four and down three. So left four, down three. Uh, now I just need to stretch it but I'm going to stretch it around this origin. Again, it's a bit of a hack. Uh, yes, it's, it, I have to stretch it before I move it off the x-axis, but if I pretend that this is an x-axis, then it's gonna do it correctly. All right, so now we're gonna graph um, the stretch as if this is zero, zero, as if this is the actual origin. And again, it's a little bit of a hack, um, but one thing that might be helpful um, is I'm going to give us a bit of an x-axis. So very, very light. You might want to, you can with a pencil, just add a tiniest little bit of a gray line, something so light that you might even want to erase when you're done. Uh, like I'm going to erase it before I'm finished. Uh, just enough to give us a kind of a baseline uh, for my x-axis. So if you notice, this is one unit above my pretend zero. Uh, and I'm going to double it. And I'm going to end up here. This is two units above my pretend x-axis, so I'll double it and we'll have it here. This is one unit below my pretend x-axis, so I'll double it and put it here. This is two units below my pretend x-axis, I'll double it and it'll be negative four and I'll put it here. So I have those dots graphed and I'm literally going to erase that very light gray line that I drew uh, that was just to help me make sure that I didn't get off. All right, so now that I have that, I can swoop my dots. Like so. It's a little bit too sharp, but it'll be okay. Uh, so there is our cube root function that's been shifted right four, vertical stretch by factor two, and then down three. So I wrote the order correct here, even though I did a little bit of a hack whenever I did the when I do the graphing because I'm lazy. I don't want to draw it so many. And I, for most students, uh, this finds the this is the least painful uh, and they are most successful. I find. So, shift right four vertical stretch by a factor of two down three. Uh, none of these changes change the domain and range of the of the uh, cube root. Uh, you might, if, if this was a different parent function, that'd be a different story. But in this case, this does not change that. So all real numbers or this, yeah, X is an element. X and Y are both elements of the real number set. All right, I said that we'd come back to it and we are. So this looks, should look very familiar um, to our first set of examples, but this time, instead of it just being a negative one, our A is now a negative five. Um, and, and again, I have a negative out front or you can move the negative up uh, up into the uh, numerator, that is the same thing. So this time we have an A that's negative five. Um, so what does that change? So that changes the vertical stretch. So it's now going to have a uh, shift left three, reflect over the x-axis, vertical stretch by a factor five, and then up four, All right? We technically from these order, and I want you to write this in the correct order, um, the up the shift up for is the last thing that happens remember we do stretches or reflections um, before you do their corresponding shifts um, so before you move off those axes you do the stretches or reflections um, but when we graph in we can actually do a little bit of a hack 
to save us some trouble. So if I was to, to graph this one, uh, actually, let me first go up to this one just to see. So what's going to change? So all that's going to change about this one is instead of it being uh, reflected, it's going to be reflected and stretched. And so it's going to be something about like this, where it's just kind of zoomed in, enlarged, um, but everything else is the same. Same amount of shifts, same, uh, same reflection, but that times five is going to stretch it. Um, and notice the way that I described this. Um, I break apart the negative and the value of the A. And when I say value, it's like the absolute value, like how, the, the, how big it is. So I break apart the negative and the value of the A. The negative tells me reflect over the x-axis. The 5 tells me vertical stretch by a factor of 5. Um, those are, I kind of view those as two separate transformations, even though they're on the same number. Um, so I just sort of kind of do them in two separate sets. And you can reflect and then do the stretch or stretch and reflect. And really, you're doing it at the same time because we're multiplying our y's times negative 5. So when you multiply times negative 5, it will both at the same time stretch and reflect. Right? So it does that at the same time. So let's go through this. Um, though, when I'm putting the dots on the page right here, I'm going to pretend as if I didn't do the others, uh, but it should feel very familiar because we've done them before. So I'm going to do my, I'm going to go left three, up four, put my plus, left three, up four, put my plus. That's my pretend origin. Since this is the rational parent function, I need, let's go ahead and do my uh, asymptotes. All right, so there's my asymptotes graph. So now I'm going to graph the parent function dots. And graphing the parent function dots is a step that at some point, that is not in the wrong spot, uh, that some of you uh, eventually will get to the point that you won't be needing to graph. If you always want to keep graphing them, be my guest, but that is not a required step in my opinion. All right, so but here's our parent function dots. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply them times negative 5. Now, do recall though, uh, so when it multiply times negative 5, it's going to re reflect it and then stretch in all one step. Now, I chose this one on purpose because recall our little trick about graphing the rational parent functions that have been stretched. You graph 1 comma a, a comma 1, um, and that should take care of most of it. Um, but instead of me graphing uh, 1, 5, 5, 1, up here, it is reflected, so I'm just going to go up instead of down and down instead of up. So um, from here, I'm going to graph uh, 1, negative 5, and put a dot here, and then 5, negative 1, and put a dot there. If you want to do a few more dots, be my guest. Like for example, um, so just to be clear, Rufus, this is a 1. One unit up, if I multiply that 1 times negative 5, uh, that, that's where I get that dot. This is a half right here. And if I multiply half times, five, times negative 5, I'll end up at negative 2.5. Um, so we do have a dot right there. So if you wanted to have another little dot to help you guide as you swooped. Um, and just for clarity, just for completeness, if you wanted to include this dot, um, this dot right here is 2 units up. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So uh, instead of going up 2, I'm going to go down 10. There's down 4. That's down 10. So there is a dot right there, just so you can see how that's gradually getting closer. Uh, but at minimum, on these rational functions, when you stretch, I want 1 comma a, a comma 1. All right, so now that we have these dots, oh, one more little trick. If you do happen to find an extra dot on the reciprocal function or this rational function, you can um, place it uh, on its other side because this graph is symmetric. So if this is like a half negative 10. Um, I can do the same thing by going uh, over 10 down a half. So that's where that other dot's going to be because there is a, this sort of kind of innate symmetry about this graph. Same thing over here. 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There you go. One, so 1, comma 5, 5, comma 1, but I am switching it because it is the, uh, the negative. All right, so let's swoop it.
Having those few other dots was helpful, but not required, especially on that section that was bigger. Make sure that it is curved. Um, don't just do a straight shot line uh, between dot to dot. Um, it is curved and getting closer uh, a little bit into that uh, axis. It's not a straight shot. There is that curve. I could have probably even curved this just a little bit more, and it would have been probably a little bit better. All right, and arrows all around. So there we go. There's uh, that is negative five over uh, x plus three plus four that's been graphed. Oh, domain and range. Domain and range hasn't changed even with the even with the stretch. There we go. I have one last example that you're going to do on your own. All right, I would like you to try r of x, which is the square root of negative x plus two and then minus five. So what are the letters? What are the changes? And then graph it. I'll come back with uh, the transformations and the letters uh, right after the break. All right, so you should get that b is negative one, and then the c is that x plus two or that plus two, and then d is negative five. So what does this do for order of operations? So first, 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 the b is first, uh, reflect over the y-axis. Then we'll shift left two, and then we'll uh, shift down five. So I want you to take a second and try to graph this one on your own. All right, so yes, we should reflect the over the x-axis first. So it should, uh, we should do the reflection and then left two and then down five. It will look something like that. Um, but I'm lazy. Uh, and so my hack is to move my origin. So I go left two, down five, put my origin. If you need to put your parent function dots, put your parent function dots. And then now I'm going to reflect. So the reflection is around this pretend origin. Don't end up doing something uh, over here and doing that. That is wrong, 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 because it actually does a reflection first. This is the hack. In order for you to do the hack, you have to understand the hack. Uh, so now I'm going to reflect. So 0, 0, and I'm going to the left now, because it's being reflected over the y-axis. One, two, 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 there we go. All right, so now they have those dots, and they've been reflected over the pretend y-axis. I can swoop it and make the square root. And then remember, whenever I'm noting my domain and range, make sure to use the real value. So use these values on the actual x and y axes to describe domain and range. So check your domain and range real fast. All right, our domain is from negative infinity. We're going all the way to negative, oh, all the way to negative infinity, uh, and then all the way up to negative two. So negative infinity to negative two, square bracket on the negative two. And then negative five uh, square bracket because we're starting at negative five all the way up to infinity for the range. Make sure that your parentheses around your infinities are always clearly parentheses and the square brackets. Make sure that they're clearly square brackets. So I hope this has helped you understand uh, graphing transformations. It is super important that you practice, 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 practice. Double check these in the calculator. Once you get it done, go to Desmos or a graphing calculator. Check it in the calculator. See if it makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you all in the next video.